Wow. Why am I not doing the FYC dance on this final episode of FYC that we are doing live? Because I cannot top Ryan Gosling doing I am Ken at the Oscars. That was absolutely the greatest moment in Oscar history. Thank you so much for joining us on FYC post Oscar reaction. Joining me as always, the amazing Perry Nemiroff, the mighty Jeff Snyder, and man, oh man, holy moly! All right, uh, Jeff, what do you think of the show? Good show. Didn't love the winners. Felt it was. I mean, it was just the Oppenheimer inevitable march to to victory, and then there were a lot of surprises, but I just didn't like any of the surprises. There were a lot of surprises, and that's why I love the show, because there were a lot of surprises. It was not boring, and Ryan Gosling absolutely brought the house down with I Am Ken Perry. What did you think of Ryan and uh, Ryan doing that? I'm glad you asked me about that, because as I warned you before, that was pretty much one of the only things that I watched. Um, For anyone who doesn't know, Mance and I are not home sweet home because we're at South by Southwest and someone was sitting there watching a South by movie while like scrolling and checking the updates. But obviously, I made a point to watch uh, Ryan Gosling's performance and it did not disappoint. It lived up to the hype. They clearly put the production value behind that to meet everybody's expectations. And like I enjoyed it quite a bit, not just for like the production value and how fun it was for me to watch, but I don't know, it just like felt like it enhanced that community. Like you could feel the energy in the room, even as a viewer from outside, kind of like electrify. And I don't know, it felt like the celebration that Barbie deserved. Absolutely. I I, I felt like that was not only the greatest moment of the night, but it was one of the best moments in Oscar history. I'm not just saying that as hyperbole because there have been a lot of great moments in Oscar history, obviously. But uh, you could feel, Perry, like you said, you could feel the energy Wherever you were watching, whether you're in your hotel room in Austin, Texas, watching on TV, you're in the press room, which where Jeff was at the uh, on site at the Oscars, or you are, you know, watching a movie and flipping through Naughty Perry. Um, but hey, we all got to do what we got to do to embrace the Oscars. And how do you not give that song the Oscar after that? It's such a superior song. I can't believe yeah. it didn't win. Nope. I mean, I can't uh-huh. believe it, but. Disagree. All right, we got to talk about the other, the other greatest moment of the night, which is the win of Movie Mance, Scott Mance. Each of you, Perry and Jeff, owe me twenty bucks. Because yeah, we do. There you go. American Fiction wins Best Adapted Screenplay over Oppenheimer. Uh, you know, hold on to it. I know you're good for it, but. So so let's go through the fact that Oppenheimer won seven Academy Awards. Poor Things won four, uh, which is a lot more than we expected it to. Zone of Interest won not just one, but two uh, in an upset. Godzilla has more Academy Awards than Killers of the Flower Moon. Wow. I'm going to say that again. Godzilla won. Killers of the Flower Moon, zero. Ouch. Okay. So, uh where do we start? Okay, so adapted screenplay, American fiction, original screenplay, Anatomy of a Fall, visual effects. As we called it on our picks, we went with Godzilla minus one. Sound, we went with Oppenheimer. The Academy went with Zone of Interest. Jeff, a, sn- a, a surprise, but not a surprise. What do you think? Yeah, right. I mentioned that this movie did have great sound design, regardless of what I thought of the film, that I was very impressed by the sound. And clearly Academy voters were as well. Um, You know, I don't know if it was just like, I mean, there was something haunting to it. Obviously, you got out of that movie talking about the sound. Um, I thought Oppenheimer, I mean, that sound floored me. So I'm a little surprised that that didn't win. But clearly there was a lot of support below the line for Zone of Interest. All right, Perry, what do you think about uh, Zone of Interest winning sound, including, obviously, uh, international feature? I'm not going to say it surprised me because I knew it was the number two and I knew the uh, the competition was quite close. But I did pick uh, Oppenheimer in that particular category. I think the sound is very impressive in both films. But I'm with Jeff. The Oppenheimer sound absolutely floored me. And I feel like between that loss for Oppenheimer and it was um, adapted screenplay, I missed out on my prediction of uh, Oppenheimer walking away as a nine-time winner tonight. Well, listen, it, it easily that easily could have happened, Perry. So 
I mean, close. Look, it, was close. <laughs> it was close. It was absolutely close. And I just think that clearly Zone of Interest, ever since it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival, was the movie that that people were talking about because of the sound, because of what you don't see, but what you hear. And that what that's what pushed it over the top. Of course, the Academy also does have a have an affinity for movies about the Holocaust. Uh so so we picked our our predictions. We we as a as a collective here on FYC got 16 well. 23. That's yeah, not, 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 not great, Jeff. Is not, it? Not, 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 not a great, not a great No, it's not. Uh but but I'll tell you where we went right was picking poor things for both production design and costume design. Because on my personal pick, I went with Barbie for costume design. And you know how like you're sitting there watching the Oscars. You know, and you pick something on your pool, but yet you're watching the category being read and, and you're just going, oh, shit, it's going to go to the other one that I did not pick. And that's what happened uh, with the with costume design for me. And that's also what happened with Best Actress. I mean, um, I can't believe, fun. though, that Poor Things beat Maestro for makeup and hair styling. Oh. Like no one saw that coming, really. That was a big um, and I think, you know, it was because I think we, we spent all award season talking about Emma Stone and Poor Things. We kind of left out Willem Dafoe and how incredible that makeup transformation was that they did on him. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one definitely caught me by surprise. Yeah, Perry, I, I mean, you know, every we picked, we, we went with Maestro. I mean, all of our peers and everything, you know, everybody went with Maestro. A lot of people in Gold Derby went with Maestro. And look, uh, Poor Things was nominated for 11 Oscars. It was, you know, a very, very admired film. And uh, when, when it won uh, uh, costume design and when it won the makeup, I went, oh, Emma Stone's going to win. I thought, oh, Emma Stone's got this. And that's what happened. So let's talk about Perry Emma Stone winning over Lily Gladstone. That was a big one. That was that was a big one. No, no disrespect to Lily Gladstone. I hope everybody knows how much I love that performance and how exceptional I think she is in Killers of the Flower Moon. But you also know that Poor Things is my number two movie of the year. I think Emma Stone like completed the ultimate acting feat. It really is. It's not just one of the best performances of 2023 in my mind. I think it's one of the best performances I've ever seen. So if I were an Academy voter, I would have been voting for her. I was certainly rooting for her. I'm a little mad at myself for losing faith, courtesy of the SAG Awards, because that wound up being a category that I got wrong for a last minute change. But it, it did make me really happy to see Emma Stone take that stage. And I don't know, the emotion. In a mo I did watch that clip also. Um, the emotion in a moment like that, you know, like brings right, tears. I just want to just pause mind. for a second. Block the, the one on the chat, you will never catch me uh, because that person's being a, a putz. Uh, so just block I'm that. Um, happy to have wasted your time with something that took me two seconds to fix. There you go. Okay. So back to Emma Stone. Look, that was a genuine emotional win, uh, bolstered by the, her dress uh, being a little broken. But she said she broke it uh, watching the, by the way, big night for La La Land tonight at the Academy Awards because Emma Stone won her second Oscar and Ryan Gosling won everything else with that performance. Uh, Jeff, what else struck you about the Oscars? What other, what other surprise? I mean, I was heartbroken for Li for Lily. I thought that she deserved to win and not because she's, you know, Native American or whatever, because of merit. I thought she gave the, uh, the best performance in that category. Um, so that was a bummer. But I think that you're right. When it won the, the makeup and hairstyling award, I was like, oh, like this is yeah, this, here we go. This just has a lot of support. Like they just really liked poor things. Um, so, yeah, like Netflix goes home pretty much empty handed, basically. Sony, I mean. I, I, uh, I, I, what else stood out? I mean, I was bummed for Paul Giamatti as well. Um, but like that, that Killian win was looking more and more inevitable. You know, you know, the thing is Netflix, they do so well at the Emmys. Like look at, uh, look at how well beef did at the Emmys. Look at the crown, how well that did at the Emmys. But you know, on the film side, you know, they, they got, uh, for, uh, power of the dog, uh, Jane Campion and best director for marriage story. They have Laura Dern for supporting actress and this year they 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 went home empty handed. I mean, it's on the film side with the Oscars. Netflix is still not able to to break through. And despite the fact that they've got a lot of movies during award season, uh, and and I and I, mean, I feel bad. I know a lot of people at Netflix, and I and I just uh, um, really thought uh, you know we talked all season long about how how much Elise Perry, you and I loved Maestro, 
I loved Bradley Cooper's performance, but you know, it just wasn't uh, it just wasn't happening for for that movie this year. All right, let's talk about best animated feature. Uh, another movie where a lot of us uh, we all went with uh, Spider Man uh, Across the Spider Verse, but it went to Miyazaki, The Boring Hair, and Perry. What's your take on that? I mean, from from a prognostication standpoint, it's like I knew it was so close between the two of them, and I'm sitting there thinking I want to get the most right. I know whichever one I I pick, it's going to be the other one, and I've stuck with Spider Man. I think they're both great films, but I was kind of hoping Spider Man would take it home. But I'm also very happy to see the boy and the heron win too. You know, uh, if if Spider Man didn't take it home for this second chapter, because you know, then you've got uh, uh, you know the final Spider Verse movie. That's going to be one that is, I think, like like this did feel like just part one of two. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, beyond the Spider Verse, you know, finishing off this trilogy, like we'll probably have a better chance. Uh, so okay, so, so let's a big win for G Kids, Scott. By the way, G Kids yeah. had never won an Oscar before tonight, uh, and and they did so for Boring the Heron. Um, yeah, Lily Glass. Yeah, absolutely, boy. In the what's hair. with Miyazaki though? Not showing up to accept. Wes Anderson wasn't in town to to accept. Like, come on, guys. You totally gotta show up. Totally. Uh, but I just I love that Godzilla has an Academy Award. By the way, the first Godzilla movie when it first came out came out in 1954. So this year is Godzilla's 70th birthday, and Godzilla wins an Academy Award. Like, how cool is that? Can we just say Godzilla has an Oscar? Like the world is a better place because Godzilla has an Oscar. Heroes of the Fire Moon, Maestro, Past Lives, Going Home, Empty Handed. Uh, let's see, Barbie with one for original song. The Holdovers with one for D D Divine Joy Randolph. Zone of Interest with two. Uh, I, I think this was a, uh, an excellent Oscar show. I was very entertained by it. There were there were so many surprises that that like shocking moments. And then the, you know, then the energy good, of, uh, good of jokes. Oscar. I mean, M Kimmel did a good job with the monologue. He did a good job with like the banter, even like doing that Trump thing. Uh, Trump tweeted about the show, you know, in the middle or, you know, went on truth social, wherever the hell he puts out his social media these days. Um, and, and Kimmel reacted to it in real time. Um, so I think that there, there were a lot of things, the in memoriams taking some flack online, but I thought it, I liked it. Yeah. There were a couple names that, I miss and there's you know every year there's grumbling about who wasn't included or who gets relegated to the very end but i thought it was a, a pretty well produced show and it seemed to like move quickly yeah it did it did it came in well under three and a half hours which for the oscars is pretty short uh Perry, what did you think uh, about the lack of clips scott uh yeah i thought about that and i thought it was a nice touch to have past oscar winners you know five Os past oscar winners introducing each category for acting. Would you um, rather have that than the acting clips? Look, I've seen the movies, so I don't need to see the clips. I think it's a nice touch, you know, uh, peers honoring peers, uh, Oscar winning peers, uh, honoring Oscar nominees in the moment. I, I, I look, I'm sure it'll go back to the clips, uh, you know, depending on what people say about this, but I thought, I think you're right. I think the show moved along really, really good. I think it's one of the more entertaining Oscars I've I've seen uh, because it didn't move along. It up the prestige. Like again, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I did watch Emma Stone win her award. And I don't know, like just like the way the 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 curtains or whatever they are rise and like reveal these Oscar winners and the way that they like pay respects to individuals and then they're all up there when someone wins. I don't know. That just feels like a like an extra special way for someone to get up there and accept award an award. Hey, did, did you see the end with Pacino announcing Best Picture or no? Maybe I not. did. I did. <laughs> Why? Why, Jeff? <laughs> they gotta they gotta stop letting these older folks uh announce these these huge awards at the end did he did he like skip over where they're supposed to like uh, you know announce the the nominees one last yes time? i mean it, it kind of just open got up there and opened the envelope was like i see oppenheimer and i yes, was right. like well right. that was pretty right. anticlimactic like even emma thomas was like is, is that it <laughs> yeah yeah it was anticlimactic for sure yeah that was uh you know, like Al Pacino comes out, you know, there's a, you know, you got two godfathers in the room with De Niro and Pacino. And it was like, all right, <laughs> you know, Al is Al, you know, we love Al. Uh, but, you know, it was all good. Um, anything that you really wanted to win, obviously, I know, Jeff, you wanted Lily Gladstone to win. But Perry, anything you really were rooting for and you feel like, you know, kind of disappointed that it didn't get it. 
I mean, again, with the, with the animated category, like I thought the boy and the heron was great, even though I would have picked um, Spider-Man. I, I guess maybe the only thing that I found kind of disappointing, and we kind of touched on it already, is you know, Maestro among others going empty, going home empty handed, but I specify Maestro in particular, just because it seemed like the runaway favorite for, for hair and makeup. And I don't know. I just like, whether you like the movie or not, I don't appreciate the finger pointing at Bradley Cooper and Maestro from this whole season. Yeah. So I don't know. I just wanted the movie to get like one little pat on the back. And even that wound up being taken, not taken from it, but like earned by something else. But you know what I mean? Yeah, all the Bradley yeah. Cooper stuff was totally gross all season. Uh, yeah, it's it was very sad to see. Um, well, I would have liked, I would have liked to have seen the holdovers win best screenplay, but I guess it's now for the best that it didn't because that that would hold open up a whole can of worms now. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right because oh. of the Patreon thing. Yeah, yeah, I I haven't been, I didn't read the news, but I saw the headlines that that somebody's you know upset that that poor uh, that. The hold the holdovers was uh, plagiarized. Sorry, it's late. I'm tired. We're right, tired. And, I, and I don't uh, want to, you know, put out put forth an opinion right without reading both of the screenplays and everything because I think that there were all, also people who thought that those accusations were kind of dubious, but interesting nonetheless. Particularly the timing. I, I I was really rooting. I mean, not that it was a person, but I was really rooting for Oppenheimer to win sound. Mm. But I understand why the Zone of Interest did win. Uh, you know, that's all I got to say. Uh, any final thoughts before we just uh, do our super chats, Perry? Like one really selfish thing. I'm just so happy to see two of my top five films of 2023 go home with so much gold. I'm, I was just like so excited and inspired by what was achieved in Oppenheimer and Poor Things. And, you know, not that everyone has to like what I like to like validate my opinion, but it's, I don't know, it's really nice to see the Academy and such a significant amount of people cut, like get behind and celebrate, you know, something that I feel really passionate about. So uh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the validation is certainly, you know, makes you feel a little better about it for sure. I totally get that. All right. We're kicking it off with a biggie from my friend, Mike K. Mike, nice. you are so, you are so like too generous friend. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. I can't stay up too late tonight, but I just wanted to stop by and thank you guys for another excellent season of FYC. I got 17 out of 23 right on my ballot, but most importantly, I got to see my favorites of the year win best picture, best animated feature, and best VFX. I know Mike was really passionate about the Wes Anderson win too, so I'm sure he's happy with that. Mike, Mike, you are, you know, I've, I've known Mike, you know, on, on the, uh, uh, this, uh, space YouTube space for, I think like 10 years now since I started doing profiles. So Mike's, Mike's awesome. Thank you always for your support. Uh, and especially here on FYC. Thank you, buddy. All right. We've got Landon here. I really felt Lily deserved to win. Help me decipher why she lost. It makes my heart break. I guess I'm emotionally attached. I think it just comes down to the movie. I think that they really liked poor things, which, you know, one, how many was it Four tonight and killers four. of the fire moon went home empty, uh, empty handed. Um, did it help that Emma stone was, you know, on, on the poster front and center of her movie and, and carrying the movie, you know, for two hours and 15 minutes and, and Lily's, you know, only in for 50, 56 minutes, probably we'll never know if she, you know, would have beaten Dave and joy Randolph had she run supporting. But I, I, I think that she went lead for a reason and it was, it has ramifications beyond just this race. It has ramifications for her career. Emma Stone uh, was also a producer. So like maybe that, you know, nudged her ahead a little bit. And I like, obviously I don't know this with any certainty, but I really do feel like the reality of the situation was the vote being very close in this category. Oh, I'm yeah, sure it was ra we'll razor never thin. Know for sure. You know, we'll never know for sure. I, I think it was very, very close, you know, all season long, like one, you know, watching the both those actors, you know, win one and then the other one wins the next award, the other one wins the next award. Um, I do, you know, I mean I've said this before, uh, and uh I, I do think that there's something to be said about uh, that poor things is I mean, it's a lead performance and Emma Stone absolutely crushed it, knocked it out of the park. It was a bold, daring, uh, extremely committed performance, and there is a massive arc to the to the uh character of Bella Baxter. And as great as Lily is in Killers of the Flower Moon, you know, I, I felt like it's a little more of a supporting performance, but I get the lead and it's fine. I'm fine with that. But comparing the two performances, I feel like Lily's was a little more passive compared to 
uh, Emma Stone's go for broke performance. And that's my take on that landing. All right, we're moving on to Haunted Autumn. Hello, friends. Went twenty for went twenty to three on my picks. Missed nice. an animated short. Never bet against the Beatles. Makeup and sound. <laughs> Loved the Lily. It was a great performance, but Emma's was generational. Much love to everyone. Thank you, Haunted Autumn. Yes, so Beatles much. forever. <laughs> Mike Joyce, what's up, Mike? Best moment: a tie between John Cena and Schwarzenegger and Devito. So it was fun. It was fun. It was a fun show. There were a lot of good moments. Those are great yeah. moments, Mike. I'm, we're with you on that. Definitely good bits. And yeah, Cena was apparently really naked there. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> well, clearly I got to watch another clip. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, Kim says, Holy Toledo, what a show. I haven't watched the Oscars for easily 15 years. It was because of this show and community that I watch. Wow. Um, you three are amazing. Bummed about Lily, but otherwise had fun. See, now that's what I'm talking about. Kim, thank you for saying that. That makes us feel so good that we, you know, stirred your interest to actually watch the Academy Awards. So I can't think of any better, better validation than that, uh, of course, in addition to your $20 donation here. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe right. next year we'll see John Mulaney hosting because he did he a great awesome. job. Yeah. He a was awesome. He was about his audition, man. <laughs> Edward says, oh, what's up, guys? My sister and I have been fans since the Green Book bet. Oh. You guys should do a way too early predictions for next year. Not happen. No, I got no, no way. <laughs> uh, here's what I'll, all right, here, here it is, Edward. Dune Part 2 is going to get a lot of Oscar nominations. That's all I'm prepared to say. <laughs> to, I'm like, I, I was trying to like come up with maybe a, a Sundance movie that – like sparked that way, but off the top of my head right now, I can't really think of anything. You know, I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, I, I'll tell you what. Sing Sing, Coleman oh, Domingo. Oh, that's a good one. That Coleman Domingo, you know, this was his his entry into the Oscars with being nominated for Rustin, but wait till y'all see Sing Sing because that is the movie that where he's really going to have a great chance for a nomination, uh, possibly a win. The other movie I liked, loved, from TIFF that's being released or dropping on Netflix in June is Hitman, starring mm -hmm. Glenn Powell. That movie is fantastic. And I hope that gets a big push for the Oscars because it is amazing. This isn't an Felix, Oscar. Felix Slater, uh, you know, can kiss my ass, man. I haven't I haven't looked at what <laughs> Jeff, it man. What, what is yeah. it with these people? Yeah, they they just got that too much free time and just don't. I'm know trying to do. imagine being a troll who's like, "Ooh, Perry and Scott and Jeff are doing a show tonight. I better be there on time so I don't miss it, so I can ruin the show for everybody." Here's yeah. something more important than that. It's not an Oscar prediction for this year, but a cool Coleman Domingo thing is yeah. he's likely going to be a producer on what winds up being one of my favorite horror movies of 2024, which I think is real cool. He's um can't remember if he's a producer or an executive producer on It's exactly. What's Inside, which uh, premiered at Sundance and is now playing at South by Southwest. But I love that movie. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, okay, let's see. Not Chuck Production says, a lesson from this we must take is the path is still matter considering how much they overlap this year. Why do they matter any more than SAG matters? I mean, don't we hear this? All the, you know, the precursors, the precursors. Well, Lily just lost. So <laughs> SAG can't matter that much. So like... So why does BAFTA matter? Because it's just those one winners won. I, I don't and, and 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 uh, Lily wasn't even nominated for uh, mm -hmm. for the BAFTA. But anyway, well, there you go. Yeah, um, we see the same thing every year. The precursors matter, like in a in a fluctuating degree, and you gotta like take everything with a grain of salt and weigh it differently every year. Dave Networld said, do you think with the nominations and now Oscar wins that the rapidly growing international branch will continue to make big differences in outcomes? 100%. Yes. And that, and that that is what the previous commenter was trying to get at with the BAFTAs. I just don't think oh. like, I, I mean, that's what, that's what I would I assume mm -hmm. the point is that they're making. And they're correct. Like you're, you're right to say, I think that's evidenced by like the poor things in zone of interest, love and anatomy of a fall winning screenplay. Like, for international films don't typically win the screenplay award. So you you would you do feel the international influence, but I'm not gonna say, oh well, it won a BAFTA, so now it's automatic to win an Oscar. That's not the case. Good point. 
case with any award show. Rob says, watch Zone, and it was masterful. One of the best speeches of the night. Also wish I could have understood the Godzilla speech. God bless him. Uh, that was a beautiful moment, and uh, that's what the clips are there for, so we can go back and watch it. I'm sure someone will put subtitles down so that we can really get what they said. But I, whether I could understand it or not, it was a beautiful moment, and yay, Godzilla. That is so yeah. exciting. I couldn't understand a word Justine Trier was saying. <laughs> yeah. I got to go back and watch some speeches. Hans at Autumn is back. Best upset of the night. Despite all the trades counting him out, uh, Messi not only made it to the ceremony, but had his own seat. Did he really? Yes, he was there. Yep. I'm Messi was there. I don't think that that was Messi. You think that was another dog that looked just like Messi? Yes, I do. That was Messi standing. I thought about that too. Like that's what Chris Gardner reported. He said that Messi couldn't make it, and they had an imposter, a lookalike. Oh, oh. Well, you know what? It was a nice moment anyway. So there you go. I'm definitely not going to get any sleep tonight, and I'm going to like do online investigation on this now. <laughs> um, J N K Z says. I, for one, was bummed for Lily, literally based on her being Native American. Film awards at this level are just subjective self-congratulations. Yikes. Yikes. Thanks yeah. for watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, I well. mean, if you really thought that, I don't know what you're paying attention to. Yeah, like, why, why are you watching? I think, like, I think award season is just, like, one of the most beautiful things in the world. And I, I, oh, I also think, um, <laughs> I also think, like, in addition... I say this, I say this all the time, but like, I also think in addition to uh, like congratulating each other, like true self congratulations is a very important thing. And I like seeing people like have their moments and feel good about their work personally. And I don't know, feel the value of being celebrated. Dave Networld says, outside of the show itself, I just want to say a huge thank you for your continued excellent coverage and apologize for the caps, Barry. I can't help, I can't help but read things written in caps as like yelling. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Uh, it means a lot that you appreciate what we're doing here with that place. Thank you, Dave. Um, now we have Not Chuck Productions. This was the first time Disney had lost an animated feature two years in a row. Oh. And the first time this two non-CGI non animated movies won in a row. Oh, okay. That's a good point. Wow. Way to go, Not Chuck. Awesome. Interesting. Um, we are up to Kevon. We know Pacino likes to play around on the first take. But you only get one take at the Oscars. They're live. <laughs> All right. Next up, would want the clips back for the acting awards alongside what they did this year. The clips enhance the experience so much. So happy for Emma Stone. Yeah, I, I too want the clips back. I don't need, you know, the five Oscar winners to come up and say stuff that they definitely did not write, right? Some other writer is telling them how they feel. Oh, you're so wonderful. Like, we get it. You're nominated. We don't. I don't need a 30-second thing about how wonderful these people are. Let's see why they're here. Good point. Can't argue Randall with says, The Batman moment was awesome. Keaton yep. is Batman. <laughs> Keaton is Batman. I, I tweeted that. <laughs> I was I completely agree. So I have a feeling this one's probably a super sticker, which we can't see in StreamYard, but we'll all go look at what you sent, Fallen Skater, after the show wraps up. So thank you. Um, imagine if Poor Things won Best Picture over Oppenheimer. It would have been the biggest upset since Shakespeare in Love and Saving Private Ryan. You know, Keshav, I was actually thinking that might happen after, after the makeup win. And so especially so after... Interest. Yeah, after the Best Actress win, I went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Maybe they'll give Oppenheimer a director for Nolan and they'll get Poor Things because a lot of people really love Poor Things. That, that would have been, oh, my God. I, look, it didn't happen. It would have been a hell of a thing if it did. All right. Is there a certain past acting performance that made you so enthusiastic to cover the Oscars? For me, it was Kathy Bates' win for Misery. Oh, good one. Have uh, watched 33 consecutive ceremonies since. Is there a certain past acting performance? Um, I would just say not really acting, but I would say the movie that made me want to watch the Oscars was Star Wars. I've been mean, watching the Oscars ever since 1978 because of Star Wars. I and I was crushed. Thing like that. What's that? I wish I could remember a specific movie that oh, kind yeah, of. Yeah, like I remember, I remember, you know, because I mean, I, of course, that movie just was like the biggest thing to ever happen up to that point in the movies. 
So, so like watching the Academy Awards, it was like, and then just watching, you know, uh, uh, Annie Hall win over Star Wars was like crushing. But yeah, it was Star Wars that made me want to watch the Oscars in the first place. I think it's because I love movies. I think it's because I like happy times and seeing people's hard work celebrated. And I also think there's something in me that just likes prognostication. <laughs> like I love, I love box office predictions and now I also love Oscar predictions. So yeah. I feel like that all added to me being Oscar obsessed. For me, it's a movie I never even seen before. Uh, Life is beautiful. Oh, <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. When Benini was, was, was going over the chairs. I was like, Oh, this is interesting. That was uh, 1999 when that Oscar happened. Yes. Did Al Pacino? We're wondering the same thing, Javier. Did Al Pacino f up the Best Picture announcement? I thought of that, like when he opened the envelope, and I'm like, like, aren't they supposed to say? And ah, once again, the Best Picture nominees are. Really? How do you do fuck this up? This is like the line that everyone who works in this industry knows, and the you know, like the on the envelope goes, or the and the Oscar goes to however you want to say it. I, I, Pacino, do you not practice this? <laughs> Got 20, 20 out of 23. When do we get any predictions from you? Oh, dude, <laughs> uh, I'd love the support, my friend, but you know, we gotta we gotta we gotta rest. <laughs> I mean it's not that far away. <laughs> like I can't believe how soon phase one starts to amp up. Yep. As someone that didn't really care for Oppie, this night was kind of boring, but excited for this. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, Wiley. Right. Uh, this, I mean, look, I going into the Oscars, I thought it was going to be so predictable that it would be boring. But with so many upsets and then the moments themselves, it was anything but boring. I don't think I've ever enjoyed and had so many consistent moments where I was like watching, you know, I thought something was going to win and it didn't. And I just went, oh, come on, <laughs> you know, like I think one of the first ones uh, that I got wrong was uh, – Oh, geez. What was it? Um, oh, shoot. Uh, might have been. Oh, well, I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was I just I, I had a great time anyway. Uh, love FYC. Always look forward to the FYC series. Well done. You three are the best. Thank you, fanboy. There were a lot of great speeches tonight. Which one was your favorite of the night? Uh, the director of uh, 20 Days uh, Mar Maripoli. Yeah, that, that was the one I liked the most. I'll go with Davine Joy Randolph. I thought she was great. I have to circle back after I binge them all when South by Southwest is over. But I will say that Davine Joy Randolph in particular all season has like like come prepared with purpose and delivers her speeches with authority. And I just appreciate the time she seems to have put into that. Y'all are amazing. Jeff is an unbothered king. <laughs> Love your spice. Oh, what a pretty commenter <laughs> that we have here. <laughs> so this one is probably another super sticker, which we will check out later. So I will say thank you, Jason. Um, and now another Jason. I'm really happy Godzilla minus one won best visual effects and the boy and the heron won best animated feature. Yes, Godzilla one, yeah. Flower Moon zero. <laughs> Hoshi, fun. what's up, Hoshi? Thank you so thank you guys uh for such a great season. You have truly brought the magic back to the Oscars as you do every year. Thank you. Godzilla wins the night. <laughs> yes. Raw. <laughs> I love your show. It's the reason I watch the award season. No offense to Emma, but the Academy missed a moment by not giving it to Lily. I, but I, I hope that they weren't going to give it to her just for that moment. You know, like the award shows not here. It's not about moments. For what it's worth, I'm a pretty big believer. She'll be back anyway, and she'll have her moment. It's only a matter of time. Well, yeah, yeah, I yeah. hope so. Love Perry since the AMC movie talk days, and Scott, you're epic. Jeff is badass. And what bothered you most about this year's Oscars? Uh, the Oscars themselves, the uh, the awards, uh, nothing really. Uh, oh, the in memoriam segment was kind of a mess. Mm. Uh, yeah, that was uh, they kind of dropped the ball with that. But I mean, like the rest of the show was so good. I was like, all right, whatever. But yeah, that could have been handled better. Yeah, I just think it was Pacino sort of botching Oppenheimer's moment at the end. I don't know. Someone's a little crackly. 
Do you hear that, Jeff, or is it me? You don't hear that? Oh, no. I'm a viewer. You hear. Okay. I wanted to make sure it wasn't my, like, computer speakers or something. Yeah, I hear it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) As long as it's not, like, a hardware issue here, I feel like I could rest easy. Um, Jeff, do me a favor. Try muting yourself and then unmuting yourself. Maybe that'll kick that. How's that? You're still crackling, my friend. I'm crackling. Okay, let me see. I think so. Um, we'll figure that out. But in the meantime, got some some Brazil love here and uh, and a lovely super chat. Thank you so much for your support. Next I up, I took off the microphone. Oh, well, I think that did the trick. Maybe it was just like a little loose or something. Two best actress oh. wins for Emma Stone by the age of 35. What do you think is in store for the rest of her career? Thank you well, for your show. I, I think she's in store for an Emmy nomination for Cursed hmm. uh, the next Emmys because uh, the next Emmys are going to be in September. You know, we're not going to have to wait for, for January like we did this time because of the actor strike last year. Uh, she definitely is getting nominated for Cursed. That show is fantastic. I mean, I got to say, I mean, Emma Stone – just she is not resting on any laurels. She is challenging herself and she's pushing the boundaries. And in just one fell swoop, she is she is poor things and cursed. Both are amazing for completely different reasons. So I just hope that uh, what do I think for the rest of her career? Hmm. I would not surprise to see her win a third Oscar. <laughs> Limitless potential. Yes. I think you'll start seeing her producing more prestige type of pictures like um, Margot has been. Hmm. Oh, wow. If the two of them were like equally strong producing forces in this business, I feel like Hollywood will be better better off for it. Um, did anyone else think they were going to announce best? I So I actually watched this part and I swear I thought the same thing. It seemed odd that they thanked the stunt crew then just moved on, love FYC. I thought that that was going to be like a surprise announcement after like the strong response to the casting category. I, yeah, I thought like, oh, are they teasing something here? I thought the same thing. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe they are. Maybe they use the moment to like test the waters via like how people responded on social media and whatnot. I don't know. Sure. Um, a cool moment with Spielberg presenting Best Director for Nolan, especially 30 years later after Spielberg finally won for Schindler's List. Yep. Great moment indeed. Yeah, those two guys are amazing. Oh, yeah. Will we ever get an animated film winning Best Picture? I'd love yeah. to see this happen one day. I would love to see that happen. It could happen. Like, how funny would it have been though if it wasn't Spielberg and they just just like stuck to like the previous year's winner and it was the Daniels? <laughs> oh jeez, the Daniels giving Christopher Nolan best director. I would that love it. <laughs> Core Jefferson is on his way. I see a Jordan Peele level up. Core Jefferson deserved the hell out of that award. Mm-hmm. I called it. And he deserved it. <laughs> I was um, very happy for him. I didn't think that they were going to give it to him for his first uh, first time ever. Wow. So. Clearly, I didn't either. But I am really happy to be giving you twenty dollars for that particular prediction, man. You're very happy about it too, Perry. Thank you. <laughs> um, don't get why people underestimated Her- Boy and the Heron in Best Animation. The director made non English language uh, a non English animation winner in two thousand two, seventeen years before Parasite. Well, that's a great point, Johnson. Excellent point. All right. We got John next. Um, is the Academy closer to getting a stunts category after them honoring the community? Or is it just like, thanks for your work and that's all you get? Uh, yes. I, look, when, when when they announced that they were going to add a casting category, I went on social media and said, okay, yeah, that's great about the casting category, but where's the stunt category? And a lot of people kind of responded or reposted like, hey, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're totally right. Um, they they added a stunt category to the to the SAG Awards. Why not add the stunt category to the Oscars themselves, especially with the level of, of how stunts are, how crazy stunts are these days, especially thanks to Tom Cruise. I mean, that absolutely has to happen. It has to happen. I think baby steps, baby steps. Baby I steps. truly think it will, though. My favorite moment of the ceremony was when Cord Jefferson won Best Adapted Screenplay. Yep, for sure. Super sticker, I assume, Jason. Thank you so much for your support. So Oppie, Oppie minus one, um, Zone of Interest and Boy in the Heron, all World War II movies that won Oscars. Crazy. Pacific War in case of Boy and Heron, part of World War II. Well, excellent, excellent observation, Calvin. 
Just wanted to share our appreciation for all the FYC coverage. It really enhances the experience of watching the Oscars and Emmys rest up for the next season. Can't wait for it. Thanks so much. <laughs> right there with you. Um, do you ever think we'll get the Oscars before other Guild Awards? Would be no. nice to be a little more surprised. Doubt it'll happen, but would be cool. That's never going to happen. The Oscars are the end of the road. They're the gold standard. They're always going to be the last ones and the most important ones. What I would like to see happen is some of these other award shows actually go away. Not the Guild Awards because they're essential, but right. there's, just, there's just too many goddamn award shows. Yes, there definitely are. Um, I mean, the WGA Awards, though, have those happened yet? No, no, no they're happening right, like so in April. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are happening late this year. Um I agree that the Oscars should be at the at, at the end of the line, but I do think that there are too many stops along the way. Agreed, one hundred percent, absolutely. I think about that. I go to like one award show and then I need to sleep it off for like four or five days. These people go like night after night after night, and it's absolutely wild to me. All right, next up here we have per. We have uh, Jesus. Personally, I think this was the most predictable Oscars in a while, but every award was fair. All winners really deserved it. Thanks for this show. I love you. We love you back, Jesus. Sorry, I thought I skipped one, but I don't think I did. No, I am caught up. Now we're up to Lewis. Thank you all for another incredible year of FYC. I always look forward to the three of you covering the award season and want you all to know that what you do is truly appreciated. Thank you, uh, We appreciate you, Lewis. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, Jesus again. Also, super early and uneducated predictions for next year. People want the next season of this show now. Yeah, I know. Do. I know. <laughs> super early. I had to ask. Can't wait for next year. Yeah, that's – well, look, uh, uh, Jesus, we already answered that question. But thank you for, for loving us so much. You want to hear what we've already got to say about next year. <laughs> I'll give you one more. I would like to see my old ass from Sundance go on to like make an appearance at the Spirit Awards or like who knows, catch on for Oscar stuff. But it's like it's a really sweet, well done movie. I'll be rooting for Daniel Zavato, the star of Woman of Oh, Leo. that's a good one. Sporting actor, maybe. Um, I can't wait to see what Netflix does with that movie. That was my favorite movie at TIFF 2023. Did so I. they have Woman of the Year and they have they have Hitman. So Netflix Woman of, Woman of Woman of the Hour is better than Hitman. It's better than Hitman because uh, yeah, I did see Hitman. Woman. I think Hitman was great. Woman of the Hour was really really good. Um, Jeff, I think you should read this one. Jeff has ruined my night by, by presenting the idea that Messi was a plant, but I love you guys anyway. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Sorry, haunted autumn. Listen, this yeah. is all based from Chris Gardner, who is THR's rambling reporter. I tr I trust Chris if he says Messi's not the not legit. We'd heard <laughs> that he wasn't going to come, so everybody was surprised when he showed up. But yeah, yeah. No. looks like we've got D Train taking us home with this one prediction for lead actress next year, Lady Gaga. For for a Joker too, uh, I would say that sounds like a good bet for a nomination. Uh, D train, right there with you. And with that, that is a wrap on this season of FYC's Super Chats. Well, and that is a wrap for this season of FYC. Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, it's been a wild ride. This FYC going back and forth a little bit with the Emmys and dealing with the writer strike and then the actor strike and. Like, you know, we didn't even know what we were covering, you know, from one day to the next. And the award shows were all pushed back. It was nuts, nuts, nuts. But we had a great time doing FYC. We appreciate all of your support. Make sure you share FYC, this episode especially, on all of your social media platforms. If you loved FYC as much as you actually said you did, and we know you did, make sure you scroll down right now and subscribe to Perry's YouTube channel because that's where FYC is. And make sure you subscribe to Jeff Snyder's newsletter, theinsnyder.com. And make sure you watch Jeff Snyder's other show, which is The Hot Mic with my great friend, John Roca. Thanks again for FYC uh, joining us for FYC. It has been an absolute pleasure. Until next time, FYC. FYC, see you later. And here's looking at you, kids. <laughs>